Uh, hi, I'm Rosie from Sleep Through the Night, and I'm so excited to introduce to you today Sarah and Barry Trail from The Hidden Gateway, um, and they are here to talk about all things anxiety, and I am so excited for you to kind of to get to know them and what they're doing because it is fascinating and so necessary, especially right now. So um, welcome, Sarah and Barry. Um, did you want to kind of start off by sort of telling us about kind of yourselves and the Hidden Gateway? Uh, thank you so much for having us, Rosie. Um, this is really exciting for us both um, to get the opportunity to speak to you. Um, and first, I just want to sort of say to your mum and dads, um, you know, our hearts really going out to people at this time, um, being being new parents, because, you know, being a parent is, is difficult enough. And I think, you know, trying to be a parent and, and dealing with everything that's going on, um, you know, in the background of all of that. And I know we've spoken about the support or, or the lack of support really being uh, given to, to new parents and things and how actually, um, you know, so many people are struggling with uh, anxiety and being having to be medicated and things like that. And so it's a, it's a really, really difficult time. Um, so, well, first I'm going to sort of say like who we are. Um, so um, uh, I'm a forest yoga teacher and also a trained nurse. Um, Barry is a, a GP from the Google from the UK. Um, and um, so together we have um, sort of what about 40 years, I think, combined, uh, combined experience of, of working in health. Um, and um, so our journey really towards the Hidden Gateway began last year, uh, sort of um, in August, well before August, we decided that we were going to leave our home and we didn't really know what the plan was going to be. Um, we kind of uh, just left, uh, sold our house, sold everything and um, left the north of England and went on a, a trip of a lifetime really in our motorhome, took our son with us. We've been homeschooling him since the first lockdown um, and he's, uh, he's nine. And uh, we sort of, yeah, we went uh, in our motorhome and we went across uh, the UK and then we came over and we went to France. And in that time, we met a lot of people um, and um, one of the things, one of the key things that kept coming up for us was how um, people were so in uh, sort of suffering with anxiety, suffering with worry, suffering with stress, loads of different uh, sort of places in relation to that, whether it was work, um, whether it was uh, fear of contagion, many different types of aspects in relation to that, but that was something that kept coming up as key. And um, we both knew, you know, we've been in health for many years. It's the thing that we, you know, both feel, you know, is part of who we are. Um, and so we both knew we wanted to do something, but we also knew that it had to be something different than what we had done in the past. Um, and so I guess the creation of, of the Hidden Gateway has been part of that whole experience, really, in meeting people, um, in our traveling, in, in also in us sort of finding our resilience uh, to a very difficult time because um, we've been challenged <laughs> many times along the way and we've had to learn, uh, you know, to go without the safety net that we were very comfortable with and uh, without a lot of the, the things that we had before. So in order to kind of take that, that, that sort of through and there's the Hidden Gateway kind of started from there, I think. Yeah, yeah we took that travel experience and then our medical experience and the holistic experience as well, we just combine them to try and find this new approach to health and supporting people with stress and worry and anxiety. Um, the aim, I think our aim is to help people like rebalance their autonomic nervous system or their ANS with that uh, approach. And we take like a three pronged approach of uh, connection to breath and connection to body and developing the right mindset as well. Um, I Thank you. I think that's so interesting um, and so necessary that you've kind of found this balance between kind of like the medical side and then the more kind of like complementary sides and you found this lovely kind of space in the middle and I really feel like that's what miss that's what has been missing like when I know we kind of spoke before and I said that so many of my clients and my friends and my family 
are kind of who have had babies in this lockdown period and actually even if they had them before are just feeling so anxious um and like the whole kind of whole nct groups are on the medication which is brilliant you know i mean not brilliant that they feel that way but that they kind of have that support and people are kind of better at talking about it and kind of um almost like admitting it and that's okay but there's still not that support there and they're having to like wait for months before they get any kind of support and they're kind of just left it feels like they're kind of left in this limbo and everyone's in the same space but something was missing so i'm so pleased that you, you know you've put this together and um i can just see how this is going to benefit so many people i did want to ask you you mentioned about um rebalancing the autonomic uh nervous system could you just sort of explain to me kind of what that is Oh yeah, so the uh, autonomic system, this is like, it's the part of our bodies is the, that runs for, through our body, that registers the pressures that we feel in the day to day. Um, so it's, it's split into two parts. You've got your sympathetic system, your parasympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic is known as like the fight or flight. And that's, the, that's all the pressures that we feel in our body when we encounter stress um every day so everyone's going to be familiar with like a it's like a tough day at work or a tough day at home you start getting things like headaches or uh sweating palms or uh you know tummy rumbles or perhaps a racing heart or things like that or just a stiff neck and shoulders and um the the kind of counterbalance to that is the parasympathetic which is known as the rest and digest system so usually the two are just working in tandem without us even knowing about it. Uh, so you'll you'll have your stress and then you relax and then the symptoms go away because both are working together. But the problem comes when we're exposed to a lot of stress and worry more than usual. And then the autonomic system is it's like overstimulated or oversensitized. And that's that's where we come in. We come in with our kind of knowledge and educate people about that and how to how to get that rebalance back. That's amazing. And I think you're so right in the fact, kind of when you're saying it's that extended pressure where there isn't that balance and it's just this constant um, kind of stress. And that's definitely kind of what people are are going through this. It's just been constant um, kind of whatever they're going through. So um, so that sounds amazing. So I know that kind of for my clients like um, and my friends and family, like they have kind of the medication and they wait for months um and then maybe they get some kind of therapy or counseling or they get to speak to somebody so i'm just wondering like where do you kind of fit in um kind of in that and again like with like the medications that they might already be on um or what they might already have been offered through their gp gps for example yes yeah, so they might have been on medication they might be put on it or, uh, you know, they might be thinking about it or they might not be on medication at all. So like you said, th there's so much extended pressure. And then what's common is that people start saying, oh, you know, I, I just don't feel quite right. You know, I, I, they start getting kind of racing thoughts or, or worries that aren't going away or like a racing heart that's not going away or difficulty sleeping. And it's just, it's just always that so something's not quite right. And uh, it's, Sometimes if you identify that early, that's a good time when you can start to um, tackle the issue of the autonomic system and how to bring that back and to rebalance. And we're like an educational and well-being service. So we, we kind of coach people and we give tools, people, the breath uh, and the body and the mindset, which all kind of link together to just bring that ANS system back into, uh, into kind of harmony with yourself. So. Lots of people in that situation, lots of people who may be on medication, or there might be people who've been dealing with anxiety for some time as well. You know, this might be a long standing thing. I, either way, I think the most common thing would be like they, they've gone to someone, maybe they've been prescribed something, maybe they're on a waiting list for something like CBT or ACT. Uh, and we, we kind of fit in as a before, before that, because uh, a lot of people, when they tackle the ANS problem and find that rebalance, uh, that can be enough to start feeling better. They don't need to go into that deeper inquiry all the time. Or maybe they've done it and they just want to try something different. 
That's brilliant. So for me, like it's it would be quite obvious to me that actually for the kind of the people that I'm working with and my clients, this would obviously benefit them. Um, so um, so I'm just wondering, like, is there anyone else that would like who who do you think would benefit from the hidden gateway apart from obviously like anxious, perhaps sleep deprived uh, parents? Um, well, really anyone, I think, um, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of open to, to working with, with anyone um, who is sort of in this situation where they're, they're suffering with stress, they're suffering with worry, um, and it may be that they have an anxiety diagnosis or they don't have an anxiety di diagnosis. Um, there's, um, you know, it's, it's really, as Barry said, just about kind of, you know, people maybe feeling that sense of that things are just not quite right and that they think they would like to try something or maybe they've tried something in the past. Perhaps that did work. Um, I've also found um, as well that a lot of people maybe do a programme or they do something, they get that support, they get that, you know, and it's really helpful, but then it's almost like it's forgotten because, you know, life gets in the way and you're using it for a period of time, then you get over your bump and then, you know, it's almost in a way, um, you know, then you kind of almost sometimes forget the tools that you were taught before. So and I think really, you know, even that can be um, sort of really helpful. And I would also say that um, in relation to like maybe people who have been popped on like a medication and things, the thing about um, a lot of these sort of um, medications is that they take a while to actually start to work and actually, um, mm. you know, when you read the, the side effects and things of these medications it actually says that it can the symptoms can actually be exacerbated and um, before you actually start to even feel feel better um, and so you know there's a sense that actually having something that just kind of works as an interim where you can just sort of start to start to, to just start to rebalance a little bit and just take a, a little bit more control um, and just come home a little bit more into yourself um, you know can be can be very therapeutic and then and obviously then from there who knows you know you carry on with your doctor you work with other therapies you know um it, it's really it's, it, it's your thing but we're just as as we're, as we're called a gateway service we're literally just a little space um to just provide that sort of um bolt in a, um what a port in a storm uh, and then you know um what happens then is is obviously your decision Hmm. So you say like a little space, but I feel like that space is so crucial and so important. And actually the, the kind of impact and the significance of that is, uh, it, you know, would just be incredible. Um, so kind of you kind of like mentioned the service and like you're a gateway service and, you know, for the kind of health and well-being what are you what is it you're kind of offering <laughs> so we've um, created a course together um it's a, um, a three-week course it, it um it was three hours uh, on zoom uh, and it runs sort of for a 21 day period so each session in zoom um we we sort of work with this intention of working with the breath working with the body and also working with mindset and each um, sort of hour will then um, kind of go on to the next hour and in in the middle of that uh, you're you're kind of given what we call home practice to do because mm -hmm. um, in order to to shift and and change you know you almost have to do something quite regularly in order to kind of change those um, kind of learned behaviors as such which is sometimes yeah dealing with um, and so in that in that course we as I said we're an educational course so we educate you around anxiety we educate you on the autonomic nervous system we also provide tools and practices to support you to help rebalance um, and we offer a space so we work in very small groups of people um, we chose to offer the course as well where you can do it one-to-one -one with Barry um, but we also offer it um, with very small groups of people and we felt that that was really important because there's a deep um, sort of healing in a way you know to the self in in hearing other people um, resonating with other people who are in a similar situation to you it can feel very powerful and um you know kind of meeting like-minded folks and also you know i know things are changing a little bit now with things opening up but also so many people are still so so isolated so it's that kind of opportunity for other people to to meet uh you know like-minded souls and, and and things like that and we hold a space 
and uh, you know for you to be heard so we don't counsel that's not what we do but we do listen um and um you know and barry uh, also will give you know his best advice in relation to you know in the course um, what we both do but um you know uh you know his yeah. medical I think expertise uh, in that it's like you said i think we just can't underestimate the yeah. number of people who've been in their house on their own no. and that idea of meeting other people or speaking to other people in a group mm -hmm. we we recognize that's going to be mm -hmm. a huge a huge hurdle but it will be a very safe mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah and so oh sorry i was going to say so we offer that um and that's the course that we that we run and it runs for the three three weeks so um and that's i said that's on zoom and then on top of that um i also run uh yoga classes which uh, are kind of um support supporting the find freedom program and everything that the find freedom program uh is sort of is about um and so those are regular and the reason why you know i decided to kind of offer those as well um was because i feel it's important when you finish a course that you know it can be quite a scary place you feel you have all the tools you, you're you're prepared you're ready and then you know so life gets in the way and then you maybe panic a little bit or <laughs> yeah. just lost that kind of sense of the confidence you know and I, and so in order to have these kind of extra support systems and also community so you know we're kind of still creating that space that that health space so that people feel that support that that sort of um, structure and then i also offer um, a talking circle once a month as well um which again is that same idea so we'll have been working in talking circle in throughout the find freedom program it's something that we do um and we really encourage it isn't it you know if, if it's something that people really can't do they can obviously get a lot from speak from listening um, um but you know to be heard can be very powerful and i think particularly in a world where the person who speaks the loudest tends to get heard um, mm -hmm. when you are in a situation where everyone has a voice um i think that's very powerful and um you know shouldn't be underestimated um mm -hmm. and so that kind of again building that community so with the circle we offer that space as well so people can continue um to, to feel that uh, in sense of community and also in sense of being supported so you're not you've not got that oh my goodness i'm alone i can't do this how am i going to be able to do this it's, it's there um and uh you know it, it, there's different bits and you, you mm. do the bits you you know the bits that resonate and the resonates well, the find, just, sorry. sorry mary well the find freedom course the group course we're doing an introductory offer so people will get the the first session free but if they look on our website to get the code for that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that uh that's amazing um i was just thinking there's a couple of things that really kind of resonated for me when you were saying like kind of Barry when you were mentioning about the impact that actually this long period of isolation has had um I just think kind of especially with some of my clients like they actually haven't had that support like you say that you get from being in a group and although like often like comparing babies or sleep isn't helpful actually like you said um kind of hearing your experience like other people's experience and having your experience reflected back at you that's really powerful even if it is you know like oh my baby's not sleep i'm awake all night this is really hard someone mm. saying i can't sleep my baby's awake all night it's really hard it actually really supports that's really great that that fine freedom program has that kind of like longer um kind of longer support like you say when life gets in the way and actually as things start to lift and we're probably going to face new challenges in this new this new normal so that i think that's going to be so beneficial um so yeah have you got any thoughts about what kind of the bigger or the other impact might be about um you know this lockdown and now this unlocking down yeah um, yeah i mean <laughs> i can I, I just i keep having to remind myself that new mums uh, and dads haven't had that antenatal class experience or the postnatal mm -hmm. class experience I it just I keep thinking of new people who've not had these experiences and are going through these new challenges you know um so I've been researching um agoraphobia as like uh, uh something that's probably going to make a comeback and um Agoraphobia is, well, I, I define it as the, the fear of being able to go outdoors again, uh, or being the fact that you'll be stuck in your house. And that was what the traditional 
Uh, diagnosis of agoraphobia meant we're talking back in the 1960s and 70s when it was very common and we just haven't seen it very much anymore. Um, so uh, yeah, as I was researching that, the, 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 that agoraphobia term has like evolved and morphed into meaning uh, fear of situations where escape may be difficult. So mm. um, I, was looking, I was thinking, what does that mean? And uh, then, then we noticed that we saw a newspaper mm. article uh, where there was a new diagnosis called virus anxiety syndrome. Uh, so which meant you were afraid of going outdoors uh, and uh, you were afraid to leave the house. And I was like, hang on a minute. I think we should just go back to the beginning again and say, look, I th this is agoraphobia. This, this is agoraphobia. You're afraid to leave the house. And I, I could really see that. I, I can see that there's going to be this forgotten section of the population that have been isolated for over 12 months and are going to be going through this very unique and scary experience. Mm -hmm. I think so, and I think this goes far deep, deeper than this idea of um, sort of a fear, a fear of, uh, of a contagion or of an illness. Um, I mean, the thing is, um, in this is kind of like almost like the mind is, is sort of reprogrammed, and this is where you, you're kind of getting into that fight or flight response. So mm -hmm. you're in a situation where, um, you know, your world it sort of becomes smaller so your safe space your home um you know that's that's like your that your place where you feel you know you're feeling safe but then actually outside is almost the enemy but what's happened in your system is um you know and, and almost what you're having to combat then is actually this experience this very um you know of, of fear of the fight or flight response um so of the autonomic nervous system kind of going into to overdrive and almost your sort of um you know if you're battling to go outside then you're actually having to battle with your with your nervous system you know with those fears and you're almost like you know i just need to get it together i just need to do that and of course mm -hmm. that doesn't work because um you know you have to actually be desperately compassionate to yourself uh, and, and not fight um fear that's that's not going to do anything because you're actually just going to um you know make yourself feel worse and i think it's also really important to kind of note that what's happened with that is that your safe space has then almost become your your prison and um you know what what might have even happened is that um what felt safe beforehand um you've then had to move and almost compress even smaller so perhaps you may have been in a situation where you've got folks that are, are working, um, you know, outside and um, then they come back in um, and you feel that you have to go up to your room or you have to stay in your room until some sort of, um, you know, some process has been completed that you then feel safe again. Um, and of course, that again is then making yourself, making your situation smaller and smaller. So your life is essentially getting smaller and smaller. So we're into moving very much into this idea of compression. Um, and what we kind of need to do uh, in this situation is actually start to, to work into expansion. And expansion comes first from, from being very compassionate to the self, I think, and, and kind of almost realizing you've kind of got into this situation. Um, and then in forest yoga, we always we, we, um, use the term, um, you know, um, taking the brave hearted path and, and taking the warrior's choice. And that can be as simple as just taking a minute uh having a breath and thinking okay mm, okay what am i doing and it's not about fighting um or trying to you know intent what we call intensely putting up with a situation it's actually about kind of giving yourself that breathing space and those are the tools that we kind of mm. teach um in order for you to then take those brave steps outside and mm. then take those brave steps down the road and then maybe do something else and do something else. And you're literally starting to take back ownership over yourself, over your life, kind of coming back into that inner authority that you had, you know, well over 12 months ago that has maybe become more difficult because of the situation. And so, you know, we're just going sort of moving back into that place, really. And I think that's really important uh, in relation to this conversation with agoraphobia and this relation to the idea of like COVID anxiety syndrome, because, um, you know, it's about kind of taking that ownership, but not necessarily beating ourselves up for it, because the worst thing that we can do is self-punish. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, and I was going to say, as new parents, I know, I know from experience, that's something I was very good at doing. So I think that's the last <laughs> thing we need. Um, what people need is they need compassion. 
for themselves and to learn those that that sort of place you know and 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 and, and start to expand so yeah i think that's kind of i, I, I have, have you know i really have heard that you know when people are I mean, people have kind of described to me kind of this process they go through when perhaps their partner comes home from work and they have to like sanitize and put their clothes in the wash and um, before they kind of go downstairs and let the children downstairs. And I, I hadn't kind of seen it in that way that actually that safe space is just getting smaller. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's, um, yeah, you really kind of opened my mind, <laughs> like my eyes to that. So thank you. And I think that was, um, I think that was really lovely kind of how you put that about, um, first being kind to yourself and compassionate to yourself it's so far removed from just pull yourself together and the ways we often find ourselves talking to ourselves like oh just pull yourself together like what's wrong with you just oh just do it like oh the... and actually I can absolutely appreciate how if you start from a place of kindness like how you would probably support other people how actually you're going to find that a lot easier to kind of get that confidence and that strength to to take those steps so that's really powerful that's a really powerful message that really yeah, that was really good mm, okay great <laughs> <laughs> thank you Missy. yeah uh so i just i kind of really want to ask you because i'm always so fascinated by kind of the things you talk about and i i feel like i always learn every time we <laughs> we talk so do you think there's anything that um we are not talking about that isn't getting the attention um that it should have kind of um at the moment Hmm. Um, well, I would say that the thing that um, that we have been feeling, and Barry did a, um, a blog, a blog post, and you can see this on our website, um, which was uh, sort of uh, about a paper that um, John Adonais, uh, he, he wrote a paper, he's a, a scientist, he wrote a paper last year about the impact of lockdown and um, the impact of sort of assigning value to health and what would happen if you um sort of started to assign a certain a higher value to one aspect of health or one aspect of society and you um, then started to um you know assign a lower value to other to other health to other um sort of aspects of society um in relation to health and um you know i think um we've both worked in the in the health service for you know a long time and, and we've sort of seen seen that situation and i think you know it's about kind of coming back to sort of being in that place of, of understanding that you know all health is important mm. I mean, certainly from uh, working in um you know I worked in surgery and things, so working in the more sort of physical health sort of sector, there was always a sense that mental health was the sort of Cinderella service, um, and and that, that was always that was always kind of seen. But I think uh, in a wider aspect in the situation now, and I, I know that I'm, you know, hearing reports of how people have um, found that actually they haven't had the access to the health um, services and the things that they needed, um, you know, um, that they would have had before. And I think what was very interesting uh, in relation to that paper was, was this kind of, you know, sort of the rebalance that was kind of needed and the importance of being able to see all health as important, not just mm -hmm. one aspect of, of, of health that was important. Mm. Yeah, I've been reading, yeah, I mean, especially this weekend, I've been reading so much about this need to reassess, yeah, just to stop and reassess what we're doing and, and bringing back um, the idea of, well, the, the body-mind connection. Um, we always, we know this already, we, we know that if we feel under mental pressure, then we start experiencing all the kind of bodily and physical aches and pains, and that's how we develop illness. And it's the same, the same way if we're not looking after our body, if we're not eating the right things or doing exercise, then our mind starts to suffer our mental health. Mm -hmm. And so there is this kind of deep connection and, and we keep approaching the subject every few years and then we get distracted or something happens or, or we, there's a new medication or something like that. Um, so this is just a really brilliant opportunity for us anyway at the hidden gateway to explore that body mind connection and, and find the holistic perspective and and what i mean by that is just for people to find the courage and bravery to move towards good health again yeah that's brilliant well 
Thank you. Um, thank you so much for having this chat with me. I just know so many people are going to benefit from kind of your um, Find Freedom uh, program, which is just brilliant. So if people, um, and, oh, and can I just say, Barry, I love your blog. Everyone should go read it. They are hilarious and informative. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I haven't read the one you've just put out. If you said you had the new ones, but I can't. I can't wait to. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you so much. We're going we're to talk about agoraphobia yeah. a lot. This is going to be our our mm. next thing for the next four to six weeks, and we're uh, going to use the blogs and the essays to kind of lay it out. But I think we'll we'll find different ways yeah. to talk yeah, about. Brilliant. Well, I can't wait. Uh, huge fan. Um, so. Obviously, people are going to kind of want to get in touch with you and kind of join this program. You said you have a free, um, like a free first session. How can they find you? So people can find us um, on uh, on our website because our course, uh, or our course and everything runs um, off of Zoom and everything is online. So um, we uh, the, the website is um, thehiddengateway.org. Um, and we are offering, Barry mentioned, um, a £40 off, uh, which is the equivalent of one session, off of the Find Freedom course. Um, and if you type in the, um, the code find free 05 mm -hmm. and that should take the, the 40 pounds off um, so we're just doing that as a, an introductory offer uh, to the course and then um, we have many different types of social media and the mm -hmm. handle is at hidden gate org uh, and that's on instagram on facebook um, and also on youtube as well Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, oh, sorry, Rosie, and I was oh, yeah. just mentioning um, the email for, for those of us like me who who, who like old-fashioned things. Uh, we're at hello um, at the hidden gateway .org. Um, so, um, you know, just drop us a line. And we do offer um, a 10-minute um, free um, sort of uh, chat, uh, you know, to talk about, um, you know, so anybody who's thinking of, of, of working with us, because I think it's really important that, you know, we start to um, get that communication and, and get to know, you know, we need to, the people want to know if, if we're the right fit for them and all that kind of thing, you know, so we offer, you know, a chat and everything. So, um, so if they were to email, um, hello at the hidden gateway .org. Um, and then we can organise um, a bit of a chat to, to sort of um, and go from there. So that's something else. That's brilliant. Um, that is great. And isn't that funny that email is the old fashioned way now? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, well, I was just going to say thank you. Thank you so much for sharing um, your wisdom. And I'm so excited for this kind of new business and your new venture. Um, with the Find Freedom program and I just know you're going to help so many people so thank you and thank you for creating this wonderful kind of balance in this space that people you know are really going to need so it's been wonderful talking to you and I wish you all the best um, and yeah good luck with uh, in the future and I'm sure we will be speaking again soon. I'm sure it will Rosie thank you That'd so much for speaking with us we've had such a wonderful time chatting with you so yeah and all the best to you as well those mums out there and those dads as well are just going to benefit from your services and your expertise so much um so yeah so grateful for um for the connection really so thank you so thank much. you